You all know me. I'm not a big believer in the paranormal. Ghosts, ghouls, goblins, gnomes, Wi-Fi. All just a bunch of horseradish, if you ask me. And you know what else I didn't believe in until recently? One Piece being good. But now everything I thought I knew is crumbling around me. Because I am actually, finally, enjoying One Piece. After two years of committing time to watching this to see if I'll ever enjoy it. I just finished Water 7 and Innie's Lobby, and I actually really liked those arcs. Now, typically, this is a video I would post on my second channel, Moist Charlie Clips, because that's where I've been updating people on my One Piece progress, and it's also just a channel where I've been posting a bunch of other weird shit, so go subscribe to that channel, it'll make you more attractive. But the reason I decided not to put it on that channel this time is because this is such a pivotal moment in my anime viewing career. This is the biggest anime ever made, and biggest manga by extension, and I've never liked it. I've always shouted bah humbug about all the people going crazy about how good One Piece is. But now, after 300-something episodes, I'm finally enjoying it. I'd given One Piece so many chances over the years to really grip me, and it never has, so I always thought that everyone that was preaching the gospel of One Piece being the best fiction ever produced, I thought they were all just a bunch of lunatics, like solar panel scammers just making up lies. You know, I, I thought that whole concept that One Piece was anything more than dog shit was more made up than the boogeyman. But, I decided about two years ago now to really buckle down, grit my teeth, and just catch up on One Piece to see if it ever actually gets good. I was willing to subject myself to some torture with early One Piece seasons in order to see if the grass was ever greener on the other side when we finally reached, like, episode 250. There's a very popular meme about, like, no, bro, you have to give it, like, nine seasons before the show gets good. You have to watch, you know, 400 episodes before you start to like it. You just have to invest the time in it to really get the payoff. And my god, that couldn't be more true for One Piece. It took me 300 episodes to finally get to this point. That's not exactly, you know, that's... That's not nothing. That, that's a long time spent of not enjoying something before you start liking it. You know, eating vegetables before you finally get to the main course that you wanted to eat. So I understand why people don't usually subscribe to that belief. Like, it's not worth investing that much time into a show you don't even like until, like, 300 episodes in where you get, like, hypnotized into liking it, maybe. I get it. But for One Piece, you know what? I'll, I'll just say it's been worth it. I'm not conceding on any of the points I ever made about the previous seasons prior to Water 7, because I still think the pacing was glacial and bad. The outright refusal to actually kill any characters outside of flashbacks was cowardly and takes a lot of the wind out of the sails of stakes when it comes to the show, as well as a couple of other arguments I've made a lot in the past that I don't need to just regurgitate here. Up until this point, there wasn't a whole lot I liked about it other than a couple of characters like Zoro and Chopper, and I did like the Alabasta arc overall, but on the whole, wasn't really feeling One Piece. I wasn't exactly pumping my fist, getting excited for it. It was a show that literally was a, a sleep aid. Like, this was the cure for insomnia for the first 240 episodes. Like, it was so goddamn boring and generic. I wasn't enjoying it. But then, once I got to Water 7, things really started to turn up. Like a lot of people said. Most people actually when I was talking about this on stream across my journey, always said that you have to at least get to Water 7 before it gets really good. And I, I can't fucking believe it, but they were right. It actually is good. So, uh, I'm not just going to repeat all of the things I've said on my second channel about One Piece so far with my updates, so I'll just give you the brief cliff notes. I like some of the characters like Zoro and Chopper. I cannot stand Luffy. He's my least favorite character. And now, after finishing Innie's Lobby, he is still my least favorite character. This fucking goober only has two modes. It's stupid, and then stupid and hungry. And then, I guess, a third mode when he's fighting. And then he's, you know, at least he's not being annoying. Like, he's just a fucking grating character. And as I understand it, you either love or hate him. And unfortunately, I'm on the hate him side. I do not like him. He is very, very annoying, and I get that that's his whole character trait, but so far he has not evolved past that or developed past it at all. And I can never forgive this show for what it did during Skypiea, where it just put Luffy in the belly of a giant snake, and he stayed there for like 30 fucking episodes straight, and just was like left in stupid juice and like in this trance of idiot moron mode. Where he just kept like punching walls and he's like, oh, this is such a weird cave. Man, am I ever going to leave this weird cave? Such a weird cave. 
Like, he himself made Skypea almost unwatchable because he is just a perpetual stupid character. And that's just not that fun to watch, especially when it holds everything back. A lot of the problems are caused because Luffy is stupid, and I think that's just a weak plot point that drives things forward. Or at least leading up to Water 7 and Indy's Lobby, there was a lot of moments where Luffy was literally the reason things went bad because he is dumb. Like, he is just legitimately dumb, and that's it. Like, he's just stupid. Uh, it, being stuck in the belly of a snake for so long is beyond frustrating to watch because it just keeps repeating itself. Ah, oh, this is a weird cave. God, this cave is so weird. Gum gum gatling. Ah, oh, these cave walls are so big. Cave is weird. And then he's finally freed from the snake at the very fucking end. He's like, oh, you guys are, you guys came into the weird cave to save me? You're like, Luffy, it's a snake. What do you mean it's a snake? It's a cave. It's just so fucking, it's so lame. It's so lame. I cannot stand Luffy as a character. There's only like maybe three or four moments where he's been serious. And even then, he's still a bit of a goofball. And that's, I don't know, I just don't really like that kind of character trait hammered in non-stop. But all the other characters so far, for the most part, I do like, with Zoro and Chopper being my favorite. Zoro, because he's just a perpetual badass, and he is usually always serious, and when he's not, it's actually kind of rewarding to see him lighten up. And Chopper, because I actually really like Chopper's backstory. So far, he's one of the few characters that got a lot of attention given to them prior to Water 7, of course. And I, I liked that. I liked everything about his motivation, his drive, where he's come from, and how he grows. Now, we get to Water 7, and every character is getting a lot more to them, especially Nico Robin, the most mysterious of the crew. And there's a lot of drama that happens with Usopp leaving the crew after the going Mary is deemed insalvageable. They can't, you know, revive her. They couldn't get the, you know, the, the paddles out and fucking shock it back. It was kaput. You know, it's... It's, it's dead. And Usopp is, he's not having it. He thinks Luffy and the crew gave up on the going merry too early. So Usopp leaves the crew after challenging Luffy to a duel. And it's very emotional. It's very emotional. I didn't like Usopp that much until Water 7. Now I really like Usopp. And by extension, his alter ego, Sniper King. I, like, everything I complained about up until Water 7, they are directly addressing and making better except Luffy. So I'm getting excited here. The fights are better. I mean, I did like the Iniru fight from the Skypea arc, even though Skypea is a whole absolutely blue, filthy fucking ass. But the Iniru fight at the end, I thought was fantastic. And now we're seeing a lot more great fights in these two arcs. So I, I don't know. I've just been really liking it a lot more. Though most of my complaints are still here. I still fucking hate how nobody dies. Nobody dies in this show outside of a flashback. Only when they're doing flashbacks do they have death so far. There's no real integral character deaths or really emotional moments so far. The biggest culprit, the biggest crime, and this was an affront to God when it comes to bad writing, is in the Alabasta arc when Pell takes like the nuclear bomb that's about to blow up Alabasta, flies it up into the, the sunset in order to sacrifice himself, a noble sacrifice, completing his character arc perfectly, and... He does that, bomb blows up, everyone's expecting Pell to be dead because he just ate a goddamn nuclear bomb for breakfast, but then he's not dead. He's still alive, he still lives, because they don't kill anyone off in this fucking show. And I think that's such a misstep. All of the big bad villains are still alive. Luffy just knocks them unconscious like it's a Pokemon fight. That is underwhelming. I think that's very underwhelming, especially for the Pirate King. You know, the kid who wants to be the Pirate King. The crew, the Pirate Hunter, Zoro, like, it's just underwhelming. So that complaint is still here, even after Innie's Lobby. But I know there are character deaths coming up. I've been spoiled, obviously, on where the show goes because Tiana watched all of it in a short period of time, so I saw a lot of it. And I know there are character deaths that come up, but even still, as of right now, it's just lackluster. Because I always know, no matter what, they're not going to kill off even minor characters. Even characters that don't have a whole lot to contribute nothing really happens to them. So that always grinds my ass grease. Like, it, I really do still have an issue with that, pulling all of these punches, when it would be a lot more impactful to the story if they would just commit to killing some characters that obviously were being set up for something like that. But anyway, that's probably still my biggest complaint. But overall, Water 7 and Innie's Lobby have done wonders for making this show enjoyable. The villains are much more interesting here. It's introducing a ton of new, deeper, underlying issues that are going on in the world around them, even outside of the immediate problems. The overarching plot continues to get bigger in the scale and scope of it. 
So it's just finally being fucking interesting and not just a slog or a tedious chore to get through. The reason it's taken me two years to even get this far into the show is because I would constantly fall asleep throughout these episodes. So it would take me like a month, two months, or even sometimes three months to finish a single episode because every time I'd put it on, it would put me to sleep. It was more effective than Nightquill. Like, some of these episodes than the other arcs were just so meaningless and so boring. Like, it just, it, it, I wasn't, I wasn't invested in it. And there is still some of those sins committed even in this arc, in these two arcs. Like, for example, in the middle of very high-stakes stuff, when they're working to get Nico Robin back on the crew after learning the truth about why she betrayed them, in the middle of that, there is, I think it's four episodes of just flashback filler. In the middle of, like, this extremely important moment with Nico Robin opening up about her past, you know, wanting to come back to the Straw Hats, but can't because of the Buster Order. And during this, like, as they're squaring off with all the bad guys and with Nico there as well, they just, like, fucking shoehorn in, like, four filler episodes. Why? Why? Like, wh like in the middle of very important stuff. At least I think it was at that part. I I'm already getting a little foggy on exactly when those flashback fillers come in, but I'm pretty sure it's there. And it's just, you know, it's unnecessary. It doesn't add anything. All it does is ruin, once again, the pacing and detract from the enjoyment. So there are still those moments here, even in what I consider to be the best arcs of the show so far, but they're much lesser and a lot less egregious. So overall, I, I just like the direction Water 7 and Any's Lobby is taking the show. I'm finally starting to see how this opens up into something very special for the first time. So yeah, I, I'm finally liking One Piece. I know this isn't the most like detailed moist meter review breakdown of Water 7 and Any's Lobby, but I don't really think that's necessary. All of you watching this have probably already formed your opinions about One Piece, and there's not a whole lot I can do to like change your mind. All I can speak to is what I've found not enjoyable versus enjoyable. And right now, Water 7 and Innie's Lobby is exactly what I'm looking for from a show like One Piece. So I'm hoping the coming arcs continue that energy and keep that momentum pumping. So yeah, uh, finally liking One Piece. Uh, that's about it. See ya.